Welcome back everyone to the live Cube studios here in Barcelona, Spain. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube with Dave Vellante, extracting the signal from the noise. Day three of four days of live coverage, unpacking everything around what's going on telcos, connected networks, future of AI, and of course, clustered systems as GPUs and TPUs and CPUs expand in, the new infrastructure and applications are on top of it. Got a great guest, former Cube alumni, Alwin Sequeira, who's the founder and CEO of Highway 9 Networks, we go way back, he and I go to back in the 80s. Great to see you. Good to see you, John. And so, good to your see history you. is in Blue Lane sold, sells to VMware around 2005, roughly? Correct. Uh, after finishing and uh, taking a company public with Ralph Fungerman, we'd founded a company called Blue Lane, which was the world's first uh, virtual security company, which got acquired by VMware back in 2008. Uh, right after Diane was leaving and Paul Meritz was coming on board. And that's when VMware really became that kind of the cloud, looking, uh, virtualization obviously established, then they went the full stack, big time cloud play, then obviously the, it just grew like crazy. Correct, correct. But as we started with network and security, virtualization led to software-defined networking, software-defined data centers, which became private clouds, then we added the hybrid cloud, et cetera. <laughs> that was And you worked for Pat Gelsinger at the end, you correct, left. correct. As part of a uh, private cloud, hybrid cloud offering, I was part of uh, Pat Gelsinger's e-staff. And now, when, you, and when did you start Highway 9? So, one of the last things we did at VMware uh, was build a telco cloud, which DISH networks used to roll out uh, 5G across the country. That's when COVID began. That's when I went to Pat and uh, uh, suggested leaving the company after 12 years with my management team, and that's how we founded um, Highway 9 Networks. Why did you start the company? So, when we were at, um, uh, at VMware, we began to talk to all of our major customers, and as you know, VMware had all the Fortune 1000. We began to see this major trend where um, one of our top customers, MIT, told us that 97% of their users had gone mobile. And yet, we all came from the world, we invented the LAN and things like that. Uh, most of the networks on campus were optimized for the desktop, with the uh, desktop network, the LAN. Servers started moving to the clubs. What is remaining behind are all these mobile users on their iPads and uh, on their smartphones. So we said, there's a big opportunity coming here. Having just enabled um, Dell, uh, Dish to create a 5G cloud, we said, 5G is real, the technology is superior. Why not create a why not create a private 5G cloud for the enterprise so that we can pull together all of these mobile assets and that was the genesis for Highway and, 9. And Pat said, yeah, take the team or did you invest? What was that conversation <laughs> like? I, I, can't, I can't say too much about that. <laughs> I think uh, Pat and I have had a great relationship six, seven years at the company and obviously not, um, not the happiest to see us go, but he uh, let me go with the management He knew you team. guys would be happier outside VMware. <laughs> One of those classic <laughs> cases probably where they're like. Correct. We are serial yeah. entrepreneurs and things like and that. Gonna, <laughs> you're going to lose them anyway eventually. Yeah, if you don't right. let them yeah. go. Well, Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard had a famous line. They'd say, our job is to get people to think about doing their own startup. No, it's get, no train them to be ready to do their own startup. Yes. And their job is to keep them at HP. Yes. <laughs> now HPE, but now that's what they try to do. But oh, funny you should have. mention that. That is my first job out of school when Hewlett and Packard were actually in the building back in 1984. And that, it was always wonderful to see those entrepreneurs. And they were the ones that caused this uh, restless spirit, entrepreneurial yeah. spirit in me since 84. You know, that's the Cube one year in their old office. It was preserved like a oh, museum right? oh, wow. in Palo Alto. Was, remember that? Yeah, and, the, yeah and, and, and to your point, I think that, that, spe that spirit is not well documented, and it's one of the most historic yes. valley creation yes. ethos yes. of Silicon Valley entrepreneurship-wise, and that came from a big company. And I don't know if you remember the term management by walking around. Yeah, sure. Hewlett yes, and Packard course. would walk around uh, yeah. all the different cubicles in uh, Hewlett Packard, and that's what caused a lot of that uh, management style, which I think still lives yeah. with me today. And, 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 and in fact, one of the things I was saying when Nvidia had their big two, two trillion dollar earnings, I said, they were a big company that actually did something entrepreneurial, created wealth. If you were a janitor at Nvidia 10 years ago, you're a millionaire now. Correct. Okay, so Correct. big companies can innovate, they can create that entrepreneurial spirit. Great story, love how you brought that up. Let's get back to your story, okay, you were stealth. So how well, long were you in stealth? Correct. Okay, you leave VMware, you go into stealth, correct. you get some financing, tell us the story. So the story is, so we came, um, we founded the company, like I mentioned, 
COVID had started. And um, it was the weirdest time. Uh, if you realize the first six months of COVID, no one even knew what that was all about. We were all running scared. So we were all in our houses. Uh, our last day at VMware was one of these things that someone had got COVID in the office. They sent everyone scurrying. We never saw the office back again. Meanwhile, on phone, I talked to, to Pat about leaving. We started the company and we said, you know what, let's found a company in stealth and why don't we assume that's the future of the world? Why do we need offices? We should be untethered. So we said, let's found a company built on us all remaining in our homes. Uh, we had to form an engineering team uh, uh, with the funding we had, with some level of seed funding uh, created. Uh, we had to hire engineers out of India uh, to keep the cost down. And we grew to about uh, 20, 30 folks. And we said, the number one thing is let's build the product. Because one thing we learned, all the three or four billion dollar businesses we built, whether it was network and security virtualization, uh, public, private cloud, hybrid cloud, or the telco cloud, it all started with getting deep with one or two uh, early customers and making sure the product really works and scale before public. And that's what we set out to do. We had really great early customers. MIT used to be our first customer at VMware with the hybrid cloud. They were one of our first customers. They came to us and said, we are done with the Wi-Fi at the end of the, um, uh, this era. They were one of the first. They said, it's uh, showing its age. We need to completely, we moved all the workloads into the cloud. What remains are all our users. Can we get rid of the rest of the network so that it can be operated just like we operate the cloud, remove all the, and that's what we set out to do. Get all of their mobile users with their iPads, with their smartphones on this private network. And we chose to use 5G technologies because they were the superior technology. And, and your, your, the, the value you're bringing, the problem you're solving is you're taking away complexity Right, you're giving privacy, security. Describe the sort of business case. So the business case is pretty straightforward. Up to now, um, the way you run a 5G network is, can only be done primarily by the operator, outside in. And it's not really tied into IT by any means. It's an outside in, extend the signal, and that's how you um, give connectivity. We said, let's build a classic um, uh, uh, enterprise cloud, just like a Meraki cloud for Wi-Fi, but we took that 5G technology as the baseline set of APs. Don't, don't build the radios ourselves, choose best-in-class radios, but then assemble them. The thing about 5G is it's pretty sophisticated. There's a control plane. If you think about you're driving on a highway at 80 miles an hour, and you're able to go from one tower to the other, and you don't even think twice about it, it just works. To get that happening, what, what happens is a, control plane called Packet Core. And that's what we had to go and bring down into a very seamless offering, get it deployed, and have a cloud-based offering so that our customers do not have to worry about anything um, uh, uh, 3GPP, which is the protocols under the 5G layer. Our customers didn't have to worry about that. We brought it all together into a cloud-based offering. One easy touch button, and you're off and running. Put a few radios, and you'll have your system up and running. What's the 5G constraints that you had to work through? Because obviously 5G is being deployed. I won't say it's being pulled back, but we know the enterprise demand's high, but yet SLA's got to be there, so is an application market, killer app has not yet emerged. Yes. Some say it hasn't, some say it has, some say it's the internet, but yeah. what do you, what's your take on 5G's maturity level and, and is that going to be a problem? I think, I think the biggest case against 5G up to now has been, it's a lot of complexity. You got to manage the sims, manage the spectrum, manage the radios, manage the edge, manage the uh, packet cores, pull it all together. So typically what's happened, uh, this has been the purview of the telco guys. They have big teams for each of the functions and then they bring it all together. So similarly, the first wave of private 5G and all managed service providers bringing together a core and a radio, that ain't going to hunt. So we had to simplify that. So job number one is it just got to work seamlessly without having to worry how it works. Second big missing link in all the first generation, they were not tied into IT. The trick is making sure that your offering just dovetails into IT, into their um, uh, security policies, into their best practices, into networking, into MDM, into NAC, into all of those kind of good uh, hygiene stuff that IT demands. And the third big piece is having the umbilical cord with the operators. So getting this deployed in a seamless fashion that dovetails into IT practices, yet is connected to the operators, that's the winning formula which needs to come together. And that's what we believe we've achieved. Oh, well I got to say, I love that narrative. I will throw another complicated wrench in, into that by another dimension. First of all, good, good point. 
IT connecting into that, I see it. What about like 5G uh, and enterprise infrastructure, like observability and cloud? Correct. Does that connect well? Correct. That's, I mean, yes. there's a lot of blind spots. Yes, yes. And you got I mean, the telcos got all the data. Yes. Is no, that so, a concern? How do you, what do you react yo, to that? No, 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 <laughs> funny you should mention that. Because we could have just advertised ourselves as a private 5G company, but we learned a lot in the last 10 years that it's not, not just about connectivity, it's about observability, it's about cloud efficiencies, it's about 360 degree, day zero, day one, day two. And that's why we built a cloud. And the beauty of these radios that are now deployed in the enterprise uh, for this, we call it a mobile cloud. So, so to make sure that it's not tied to just a 5G, because you're already seeing 6G <laughs> notions uh, yes. here, and 5G has barely begun. Right. So rather than do it that way, we build this mobile cloud where we have great visibility into every single, not just the radio, but into the gateways to IoT, into the gateways to Wi-Fi, into the radios, into the core, into the users. So that gives you a big 360 degree uh, dashboard. One of our top customers, we can't mention the name, but it's a huge manufacturer. They chose our product because Wi-Fi was not working for uh, AGVs, the auto-guided vehicles, mm -hmm. which go around the track as you assemble the car, it doesn't, Wi-Fi didn't work for indoor, outdoor, many such use cases. So we put this, and what they were amazed about is they get 360 degree views, not just of the 5G componentry, but of all their zebras, their iPads, and all of these uh, things that got assembled on this mobile cloud. You mentioned the importance of making it seamless for IT, which I think is obvious why. That could be a potential roadblock for a lot of companies. How do you, and part of that you're saying, you can accommodate the security edicts of the organization. How do you do that though? Because every organization has slightly different security edicts, yeah. they got different tooling, there's so much complexity in security. Yeah. So uh, explain how you connect seamlessly. Correct, correct. So that, this is a very, very, very important point. In fact, what, it's one of the critical reasons why MIT and the manufacturer chose this technology. First of all, 5G technology is intrinsically more secure. Why? Because all the way from your handsets, you are uh, starting with SIM-based authentication, you're encrypted all the way from here, all the way into the um, um, end uh, of that uh, uh, secure channel. So it's highly encrypted, it's uh, uh, per SIM-based authentication, and secondly, we have to dovetail into the IT security practices, meaning we're sitting, so what happens, you create this mobile cloud, at the edge of the mobile cloud, we go into the DMZ, where you're running all the things you would normally run, whether it's CrowdStrike, whether it's Palo Alto Networks, whether it's your uh, network access control, and things like that. So the combination of the intrinsically more secure underlying 5G protocols, along with dovetailing and inserting yourself seamlessly into an IT security infrastructure, that's the trick to making sure that you have end-to-end -end security. And that was part of the development process that you guys did when you yes. started out during COVID yes. and you were getting It took us two, three years to build yeah. the system and all of these are very interesting, because most folks who yeah. come from the 5G world, come from the telco world, are not used to the artifacts in the enterprise world, because in the 5G world, you have a certain definition all the operators work on that definition and it gets homogenized. You go into the enterprise world, it's Domestic. an artifact of uh, uh, you know, years and years and decades and decades okay. of different generation of technology as, as we've all seen. Yeah, right. So what's about the product? What are you selling? Tell us about the product, what does it do? Correct. Is it only mobile traffic? No desktop traffic or, or, I mean, these are the kind of questions. Explain the product. Yeah. How is it sold and consumed Correct. and installed? Go. Correct. So, so to talk about the product, I talk about the three pain points. The first pain point, given that you now know that mobile users dominate in uh, any given enterprise, job number one was coverage is broken. What enterprises want is 100% coverage across all of the campus for all three operators. If you don't have that, uh, you have so many big gaps in us. So job number one is to get that complete coverage, which is what we do. Job number two is even when, the, uh, when you're not interested in coverage, this mobile data needs an always on model. Why? Because we just, we just heard of a, a university that had a ransomware attack and they had to shut down the network and then the essential services are lost. 
So they want the mobile data served because a lot of the essential workers are carrying these handsets. And number three, there's this whole uh, um, uh, emergence of SIM attached devices, whether they are 5G devices, AI based devices, IoT sensors going through an aggregation point. So our job number one is to pull together and create um, a mobile cloud for all of these three uses, use cases. Everywhere coverage, always on mobile data, and uh, AI and automation readiness. And that's what we are selling today, a mobile cloud for the enterprise that's connected to the operators. You're not selling radios, you're selling a service and software and yes. cloud? Yes, so that's a good point. So we sell the mobile cloud, we include the radios, we don't build the radios ourselves, right. we choose the best in class radio in the system, we sell the radios, we sell the edge that's deployed all at the, it could be either in a Equinix Colo or a Amazon Outpost, uh, yeah. or it could be on-prem on VMware. So that's the edge, it includes all of the software required, and then we provision from the cloud, zero touch provisioning, and you're up and running, and you got a 5G so cloud you, up and running. So you, you, do the, you do the truck roll, so to speak, not that it's a truck roll, it's the enterprise Correct. campus. Correct. You install, and do the service. Correct. Set up the network, use the back end cloud, and then it Got it, it's go all there. A, the, the actual uh, operations and the setup uh, of the Wi-Fi, uh, of the radios are done by the same Wi-Fi staff who is to install your Wi-Fi radios. After that, it's all cloud-based, software-based, the right software is downloaded on-prem, and you're up and running. And you're in market? We are in market, we got our, so last year, we had um, our first uh, millions of dollars of sales, which led us to completing our series A of funding. We've raised uh, 25 to date, and now that we know the product works, we got great customers. The one I can talk about the most right now is MIT, the multiple buildings, they're going all in with us. In fact, if you look at our website, there's a, a conversation yeah. I have with Mark Silas, yeah. their CT, uh, CIO, and so we are in market, ready to rock and roll. So you I, feel like you've got product market fit? We or? believe we have product market fit. This, the, the need is uh, manifest out there. Uh, we're getting, uh, word of mouth is spreading in higher ed, in manufacturing, logistics, and places like that. Yeah. Hospital, uh, um, uh, hospitals are coming, they take a little longer, and the commercial real estate, where they need this, these are yeah. some of our and, first verticals. And so are you scaling go-to-market, or are you not quite there yet, or? We are beginning to scale go-to-market. So the first phase was about uh, founding and funding and yep. product and uh, getting that right. Now we are putting in place a go-to-market team. Um, I've hired on board uh, someone very strong, long time Cisco, person from the Mario Luca Prem uh, <laughs> days and all, uh, Fayaz, who also yeah. was with the, associated with the IBM Cloud. I don't know if you have met him yet or not. So we are going to build a really yeah. good go-to-market team, uh, start in the US, but very quickly thereafter yeah. go to Europe and all. Awesome. But we are ready to take this show on the road. Congratulations, and that's great news, and looking forward to hearing more. Uh, thanks for coming on and sharing the, the story and also the opportunity, 5G. Yes. People need blanket coverage. Yes. Manufacturing, critical operations. Correct. Need to have this wireless. Yes. All right, well, while we got a minute left, put a plug in for the company, obviously your startup, love to see that. What are you guys yeah. looking for? How much funding you got? How many employees you have? Who are you looking to hire? What are you working on? Give it a little plug. Yeah, so check us out on highway9.com. Uh, connect with me, Alvin, at highway9.com. But again, this mobile cloud, we feel like uh, this is an even bigger phenomenon than the prior private clouds and hybrid clouds. This is going to impact everything everywhere. We're kind of skating to where the puck is headed. Yeah. So if you have use cases which require uh, this mobile devices, if you have problems with latency with your mech projects, if you have um, you know, uh, manufacturing, logistics, warehouse connectivity issues, if you have coverage issues on campus, Call us and uh, consult with us. We'll walk you through the journey. Everybody has that it. problem. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Alwin, thank, Alwin, thank you so much. Founder and CEO of Highway 9, The Cube. We're here in the Barcelona studios. I'm John Roy Vellante. We'll talk to the big companies, the startups, the innovations happening here inside The Cube. We'll be right back with more coverage here from Barcelona after the short break. Mm -hmm.